Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start going into the IP Agility platform. So we're gonna log in and take a look at this process right now. So we're gonna go ahead and log in as administrator. I'm gonna put in the password and click on login. And upon logging in, then you're gonna be met with what we consider the workspace. And the workspace is where you have all your queues, the different activities that need to be processed to certain levels, things like that. So you'll see here that I have my, my activity, which is a lot of validation um, and exception, invoice coding, things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start the process and go into the scan module and again this is just for demonstration purposes but this is a multi capture or omni capture platform so it doesn't necessarily always have to come in through scan it could come in through email it could come in through uh, a file drop it could come in through fax whatever it needs to be so you see here that we'll have the client and you could choose either you like in this case uh, us or europe then there's an invoice type where it could auto detect but you could also specify whether it's going to be a non-PO or a PO invoice and then there's a default language which in this case would be English but then you could choose whether it's like Chinese, Greek, uh, Japanese, Korean, you know so on and so forth. So you have those options where it would auto extract based upon the need. I'm going to also show you quickly the profile settings for the scanner which um, would then have the option in this case we're going to use file import we're just dropping files in but you could choose um, if you have a physical scanner attached you could choose different profile settings which could be set within the software as well and get a little bit more specific we could go to document separation and in this case we're just not using any document separation it's automatically but those are a couple options that are within there so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to import these files and as you see here I have um, quite a number of files and we're going to take it and we're going to ingest those all in and you'll automatically see that it's going to go it's going to ingest those eight files and um, it will go it'll, you could see the doc, the document on the right side and I'm just going to quickly tap through each of these just to show you that it did capture all eight of these um, invoices with no problem so that's kind of just get make sure your quality is good things like that um, and we're just going to go ahead and submit this job and we're going to submit this job and where this is going to go it's going to go through the OCR it's going to get OCR it's going to go through the extraction engines all the transformation things like that and while we wait for that to process it does quickly process but just to show you a little bit of the background of what IP agility and AP agility are doing now we're going to go into the solution configuration manager and again this the beauty of the the system is that you don't have to worry about um, as much custom coding because most of it is set for you just for very easy configuration so we're just going to go into the profile settings and we're going to set the profile and you could have many profiles whether it's a, a vendor or maybe a region and uh, it's a really good option so that you have various profiles for each option so we're gonna as you see here there's many many settings that you could go through uh, there's from the amount settings and you could select the type of amounts what characters to ignore different company codes and uh, the currency settings the document field types uh, and then the field settings and then the field settings is where the bulk of where your configuration might be because within that you're able to, to add fields uh, what fields need to be active and, and not active and that could also again be uh, based upon the the profile so for instance if you have Canadian where you have additional taxes or European where you have the VAT uh, there's different things that you could show and not show and it'll be still one validation form but it'll only show per the 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 region so those are the type of things that makes it very easy. You don't have to worry about as many uh, validation form for configuration. You could select what which ones need to be active and not active. Um, so for instance, if it, there are certain taxes that don't don't need to be shown, then you could make that active for one profile, and then for a different profile, then you'll have those the options. You also have field types, or you could choose whether it's a, an amount, a date, a text, a table, things like that. You could put default values. 
And again, as you see here, everything is a very easy uh, interface to just work through. Uh, other options like removing spaces, remove all spectral characters, keep certain characters. If you like wanted to keep a dollar sign or um, certain periods or decimals, things like that. Um, and again, this is set to this specific extraction profile ID of zero, and then it would be whether it's a zero, one, two, how many ever profiles that you choose to set up. Just go down the rest of these options. You have like invoice number settings, uh, some line item, line item tables, line pairing options, uh, material options, things like that. So that's just a, you know a quick overview of of each of the settings that could go through and how easy it is to just go through and configure uh, the system quite easily no real uh, technical knowledge necessary so it's a very very easy uh, interface to work through and work with um, as you need to configure the system once it's installed so we're gonna go ahead and go back to IP agility and once we're back in IP agility we could go to our work queue and from our work queue then you'll see that um, our invoice job has came in and today's the 11th and you'll see that the validation is ready to go so we're gonna go ahead and what it does is that we brought in eight invoices but it wants to process one invoice at a time and that's more so for ease of use you don't have to get um, it doesn't hold up invoices to have to go at a whole batch level and this is the validation screen and this is totally customizable or not completely but in terms of the view that you can customize it so we're gonna just hide some of these windows just for simplicity so I'm gonna close out the navigator um, and then I'm gonna minimize the, um, the current error and then minimize the thumb view thumbnail view as well and let's just uh, give that a little bit of evenness as well and you'll see here that the document type was an invoice it got classified as a non PO because there's no PO or it didn't find a PO uh, I could choose various invalid reasons and as I go down here then you'll see that um, the information was all captured well so the only thing that really was able to to do you will see is the invoice number so let's just take a look at this document um, and you also notice that on the document that I could hover over these things e each of the the lettering and the, and the wording and you'll see that it automatically extracted because it's OCR so it makes it very easy to um, know that it's right but you also see that a client configuration requires validation for all documents so if in this case it got everything right but just based upon the rules that we want the invoice number in this case to be classified but you see that the line items were extracted properly so the, it's literally a one-touch process in this case where I'm just making sure that the invoice number is good to go and we're just going to complete that activity now once that one activity is done for that invoice it's going to automatically take me to the second invoice uh, throughout the system and that's really really beneficial you don't have to keep on going back to the queue but again that's also configurable that if you do want them to go back to the work queue that um, you have that option to go back into the work queue in this case you see that this was a PO invoice because there was a PO number found and the PO number and the company code you'll see that the one line item was extracted um, properly and it makes life very very easy so again uh, easy one touch process nothing overwhelming uh, the validator just has to verify that the invoice number was accurate you'll see that the invoice number was extracted and where it was extracted from and we're gonna go on to the next invoice so we're just gonna go through go to the third invoice and again as you see that each of these invoices it automatically also took my settings that how it was displayed so it doesn't have to keep on being reset um, you'll see that the document ID and job ID was down there and then again invoice number that was all good and 
easy one touch process, one click. And we're gonna go to the next invoice. And from that next invoice, then you'll see that, again, invoice number was extracted properly. So we're just gonna take a second and I'm gonna show you some of these great features around the extraction. And you'll see that, for instance, for the build to name Kofax, it, it did extract it properly but I can also do a type ahead feature where it would say just a K and you'll see that drop down. I could also do a lasso where I could just lasso that information and pull like the Millicorp or Millipore Corporation, or I could just click it and then Colfax would come back in. So that was simple. Again, simplicity, one touch is what the system is all about. Uh, speed of processing those invoices, getting them through validation and leveraging the power of OCR, transformation modules, and all of the uh, out-of-the-box features that IP Agility um, does come with to then make AP Agility that much more effective in terms of time, cost, um, implementation, and all those great benefits of utilizing the system out of the box. So I'm just gonna, again, knock out the rest of these invoices and then we'll head over to AP Agility in a second. All right, so we are finishing up that and we're gonna jump over to AP Agility. And AP Agility, I'm gonna log on and AP Agility and IP Agility, like we mentioned in the beginning, are two separate modules or add-ons to total agility, but you can either have it that it's one screen or you could have it as two separate logons for separation of duties. So you'll see that we have the various tabs and you'll brought into the work queue and all of the information that would be brought in for each of the invoices, the date, invoice date, due date, things like that. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take my first um, invoice coding activity. Also notice that only the non-PO um, invoices had to come through. So as soon as you brought in, it's met with the status that this uh, invoice was required for GL coding and to use the lines tab to add lines. So we're, I'll just quickly jump into the header and you'll see that the header information is all there. That was all extracted, it's been validated. So by the time it gets to uh, those that your, your GL coders or your, your coders, then there's very, very little information for it to worry about because that information should be accurate and should have been handled um, during that time. We're gonna take, quickly take a look at the lines tab and you'll see that I have three lines here. Uh, and I could either do them one by one or if I say this is all going to the same or receiving the same coding, then I'll be met with the choose the GL code. I'll have recent codes that I could select um, or I can manually do it. So I'm gonna select the USA. I'm gonna say that this is going for Orlando. I'm gonna choose an account. And then in this case, I'm gonna choose uh, 200. And then for the group, I'm gonna say that the IT is for the group. I'm gonna click okay. Once I click okay, then I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and you'll see that I need to update my lines. So I'm gonna update the line and then as I go, I could just click on the one line, you'll see that my code information is there. So I could do the, again, either individually or um, as a mass or a bulk um, GL coding as well. And I'm gonna click on submit to say that the coding is complete and I could put a comment that everything is you know good to go or if you just wanna leave the comment blank, then you can as well and I'm gonna click on OK and submit and it's gonna take me back to that queue and you'll see that I have one less activity there uh, we're gonna jump in quickly to the exception and in the exception then you'll automatically be met with the reason for this exception so in this case you'll say that um, it needed to be added to analytics and that's the reason why this was just an exception again for demo purposes and but all the information is there and I could either choose like a resolution complete I could look at that header information as 
you know, our manager or whoever needs to be handling this exception, see my lines. In this case, they probably didn't, we didn't add any GL codes uh, because again, it was an exception. I could either cancel the invoice, reassign, do any comment request, hold that invoice for various reasons. Uh, and you'll also see that this is not a duplicate. So you'll see that status of the invoice that you know that this is not a duplicate and that's not a reason for this exception as well. So um, I'm just going to discard the changes for right now and take you back into the queue. You'll see that that co one that I just coded now is in the approval queue. And I'm going to go into the approval queue. You'll see that the information is there and it'll tell me that the invoice does require approval require approval from me and um, I could look at the information so it's 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 as clear as it needs to be uh, for the end user so that there's not a lot of uh, room for interpretation and, and what to do for each uh, aspect so you'll see that the code that we put in earlier was brought across uh, I could see each of those codes and I'm I could also see the history that me as the administrator in this case went through invoice coding and my notes and comments that were added so I could go ahead and I could see approve I could reject I could assign comment hold and in this case I'm just gonna approve it and I have no additional comments so I'm just gonna say okay and submit and we are good to go so that's AP agility at a high level uh, overview of the system from invoice coding to approvals to exceptions and how each would be handled.